The F-111 considers the most advanced new generation fighter bomber of the U.S. Air Force in its time. The U.S. brought F-111 into Vietnam in the hope of changing the outcome of the war. Unfortunately for them, even the most modern aircraft can be knocked down, somehow. In March 1968, the U.S. Air Force took the first six F-111A to Tarkley base in Thailand. On March 18 of that year, starting to engage in battle, the F-111 joined forces with the Air Force to attack North Vietnam. But after only 10 days, the first F-111 crashed in Western Harting, explained by the Americans as an accident, while North Vietnam reported that it was shot down by the anti-aircraft artillery of the 280 Regiment. On March 30, 1968, the anti-aircraft missile defense of Vietnam for the first time shot down an F-111 in the sky of Hate. This was the excellent battle of the 64 missile battalion, with only two missiles, manual guided. The F-111 was destroyed at very low altitudes. By the end of April 1968, the 3rd F-111 crashed in a missile in the north of Vietnam explained by the U.S. due to technical problems. Within one month, 55 missions and three F-111 were crashed when trying for the first time in the Vietnam battlefield. The Pentagon couldn't accept this result. The U.S. Air Force had to rush to withdraw the rest to the factory to continue researching and perfecting this superfighter bomber. After the first bitter defeat in Vietnam, F-111 has undergone a comprehensive modification both in technical and tactical terms, and it was not until 1972 that it returned to the old battlefield. In 1972, F-111 returned, participating in Operation Liebecker and Liebecker II with a powerful force and more careful preparation. 48 F-111 were divided into three groups, deployed at Tarkley base of Thailand, and started nine missions in northwestern Vietnam. From the experience gained, the U.S. Air Force had adjusted its mission wisely to ensure more safety for the F-111. On the battlefield, F-111 only bombs coordinates like B-52, they hit key points on North Vietnam's motorized traffic roads such as ferries, bridges, and steep passes with various bombs. The time intervals between air strikes on each key point was calculated enough to prevent enemy engineers from repairing, overcoming, and causing traffic jams. When replacing the B-52 squadrons by the F-111 squadrons, the frequency of the sorties had to increase, as the F-111 could only carry about 11 tons of weapons, while the B-52 was 30 tons. Many key points were subjected to a round of bombardment every 15 minutes throughout 24 hours. These missions were often successful because the F-111s flown at altitudes below 500 meters at high speeds, so the opportunity to fire them was less than 7 seconds, very difficult to destroy. For missions in the north, the F-111 only carried out 9 attacks. This draw was previously detected by A-6A and RF-4C aircraft. Despite its low efficiency, it caused the loss of fatigue and stress for the enemy air defense forces when they were on duty all day and night. F-111 had good terrain flowing radar system, faster, more powerful, and can carry a number of bombs 2.5 times F-4. It was especially capable of performing on bad weather days, where other aircraft have to stay at the airport. After appearing, F-111 had turned its predecessor into amateurs. F-111 flying alone at an extremely low altitude, wriggling terrain to disable enemy radar as well as optical devices. Despite being a modern warplane, 
during the raids on Hanoi and Haiphong during the Operation Linebacker II in 1972 against North Vietnam. Five F-111A were shot down out of a total of 48. The loss rate was 5 out of 48, or more than 10%, a rate that was too high for Americans to expect. According to information from Vietnam, the Vietnamese have experienced dealing with low-flying aircraft before. They were ambushed and waited on the familiar path of the enemy. It was important to correctly adjust the fly route that F-111 will take. Throughout the expected fly route, they deploy ambush forces with a variety of weapons, including low-range artillery, 37mm anti-aircraft artillery, and even rifles. Hanoi capital at that time had nearly 200 just battlegrounds. The North Vietnamese had set up observatories far away. There were soldiers silently on duty day and night. The system of military observatories plus local stations forms the denser observation network around Hanoi. Although at night, but because F-111 flew very low, the observatory sometimes saw its silhouette passing, accompanied by the roar of the engine. When F-111 was detected, scouts must immediately notify it, either via radio or wire communication. When the chair of police of the front units fired up, it was a signal for the rear units to promptly fire. All guns and anti-aircraft artillery turned in a predetermined direction, ammunition on the barrel, ready to fire when ordered. They fired everything they could, forming a bullet screen with depth, stopping the fly route of the F-111. Of the thousands of thousands of small bullets, only one hit at the critical spot, even the mountain F-111s must fall. During the Operation Liebecker and Liebecker II, the F-111 made for thousand short teeth. Although some were shot down, the F-111 was still recognized as the safest fly profile of the U.S. during the Vietnam War. After the Vietnam War, F-111 continued to be used in the war in Cambodia, the Libyan War in 1986, the Gulf War in 1991. In these battlefields, due to the absence of worthy opponents, American aircraft did not face many difficulties. Only few F-111s were defeated in all of these battles. The F-111 was in service with the U.S. Air Force from 1967 through 1998. F-111 was also seen in Australian service. The Australian government altered 24 F-111C aircraft to replace the Royal Australian Air Force English electric cameras in the bombing and tactical strike role. The purchase proved to be highly successful for the Royal Australian Air Force, although it never saw combat. My presentation of F-111 ends here. The war was in the past. I have considered a lot when it comes to this topic. Even so, I still do it. Like you, I love history. If you notice, my videos never mention winners or losers, just historical events, and let the audience have their own judgment. Even so, balancing is a very difficult thing. I hope you have had an enjoyable time at Zhongchen channel. Thank you for watching. Goodbye and see you again.